Hello, raw online learners. Uh, we have seen amino acid chemistry, protein structure, and about the organization of proteins. From this session onwards, we are going to start the metabolism of amino acids. We all know the simplest amino acid in our body is glycine. So the class today is metabolism of glycine, and the second simple amino acid is alanine. So we'll see. the metabolism one by one from today onwards so glycine structure is like this central carbon which is the alpha carbon it contains two functional groups one is cooh and another one is amino group to the r group r group means it is the side chain to the r group we have hydrogen atom so we have two hydrogen atoms on either side so this is the simplest amino acid but this carbon is not a chiral carbon because all the four groups attached to this carbon is not same so this is not a chiral carbon so this compound is optically inactive one more thing is glycine is a non essential amino acid that means it can be synthesized in our body and second thing it is a glycogenic amino acid that means the catabolism of glycine so during the metabolism the end product is glucose the amino acid metabolism will see everything in this order based on the synthesis its catabolism and the metabolic role and at last its metabolic disorders we call this metabolic disorders or inborn errors of metabolism so any enzyme deficiency in the metabolism it leads to a disorder we call that as an inborn error of metabolism so synthesis means whether it is an essential amino acid or a non essential amino acid so we'll see that in the next day so the first thing we are going to see is a synthesis synthesis means based on the essential or non essential essential amino acid means it is not synthesized in our body whereas non essential means it is synthesized in our body so the glycine is synthesized in our body so it comes under non essential amino acid so the first thing we are going to see in this metabolism is how the glycine is synthesized in our body so the glycine is synthesized from carbon dioxide and ammonia from threonine glyoxylate choline and serine serine and threonine or the hydroxyl group hydroxyl group containing amino acids so threonine and serine both are hydroxyl group containing amino acids they can synthesize glycine the other things are carbon dioxide ammonia glyoxylate and choline so from these compounds we can synthesize glycines we'll see that one by one first thing is how carbon dioxide and ammonia can condense together to form the glycine it is produced by the enzyme glycine synthase we need one more compound along with this is carbon dioxide and this is ammonia so along with this two compounds we need one another compound that is N5N10-methylene tetrahydrofolic acid, which is a one-carbon compound. So, along with carbon dioxide, ammonia, we need a one-carbon compound to synthesize our compound glycine. This is a complex mechanism, and it also requires the oxidation of NADH to NAD+. the enzyme here is glycine synthase because we are synthesizing glycine so the enzyme here is glycine synthase 
So next we'll move on to the second reaction. How it is synthesized from serine? Okay, this is a compound of serine. Hydroxyl group containing amino acid. This is glycine. So, the one thing we are going to remove here is the methylene group. Okay. So, we are going to transfer this group. So, which one is going to accept this one? Tetrahydrofolic acid and it becomes N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolic acid. So, we are going to transfer this compound and the resulting compound we are getting, the resulting product we are getting is glycine. The enzyme here is transferase. The third reaction is, we have seen the first hydroxyl group containing amino acid, serine, how it is producing glycine. The third one is how threonine is producing glycine. This compound is threonine. You can see the hydroxyl group here. So, when we remove an aldehyde group, acetaldehyde, we are going to get the glycine. Okay, so we are going to remove the acetaldehyde. So, while removing the acetaldehyde, the enzyme required here is aldolase. So, we have seen how glycine is synthesized from serine and threonine. So, what is the fourth reaction now? It is from glyoxalic acid. Okay. This is the compound of glyoxalic acid. We are going to get glycine. You can see here glyoxalic acid is a keto acid. Glycine is an amino acid. Whenever an amino acid is produced from a keto acid, the reaction responsible for this is transamination reaction. So, this keto acid is going to react with one another amino acid and produces a new amino acid and new keto acid. This reaction is called as transamination reaction and the coenzyme required for this is pyridoxal phosphate. So, you can see the compound which we are getting. Now, you can see the first amino acid which this keto acid is reacting is glutamate. And we are going to get a new amino acid that is glycine and new keto acid that is alpha ketoglutarate. So, the enzyme here is transaminase and the coenzyme here is pyridoxal phosphate.